Good evening and welcome to my garage and not really the best lighting or angles but I'm doing the best I can with what I've got. So this was an unplanned video and it's going to probably become a short video series. Let's hope it's a short video series. But what I've got here is on the stand, I yesterday I was going to, and there's so much to talk about here real quickly and I'm trying to make it quick. Yesterday I was in the apartment in the evening and I was like, or in the afternoon, I was like, I want to find an engine to put on the stand and go out and do some runs with, especially one that I've been wanting to run and one that, or one that has many people have been wanting to see. So I pulled out my Sato FA 200 Ti engine and I thought, this is going to be a layup. This will be easy. Just put it on the upright, take it out there, I'll do a quick test run and everything will be great. Well, it didn't turn out to be that way at all. Now, let me preface, before going any further, let me preface by saying that I have run in the past, they weren't my engines, they were loaned engines to me, both the Sato FA100 Ti twin inline and the 200 Ti. And I've got videos on my channel showing me running those engines. Now, that was, I don't know, four, five, six years ago maybe. And for the life of me, I recall running them. But I, there are, there's one key thing that I did not remember. And I'll get to that here eventually. So I'm thinking, I'll just put my TI on this stand. We'll just fire it up and run it. No problem. The last time I had a 200 TI, it started. Hand started, first flip, everything was great. <clears throat> not the case with this one. So I brought this out to the stand or into the garage to do a quick run. And, you know, I had turned this engine over before. And that's where the lack of memory comes into play. I felt it. I felt compression, I thought. But I don't remember exactly how the other two actually felt. And like I said, there's a lot to try to cover here. So when I had this on the stand, the first thing I noticed was that it was not drawing fuel on prime. I had the carb closed, rotating it over, it's not drawing fuel. So I'm thinking, okay, so we've got a, a, a leak, an air leak someplace. So I started going through the process of <clears throat> trying to figure out if there was a leak in the intake manifold. And I really didn't get too far because really to do this, you really have to start taking things apart. And I had it on the stand. I was like, I just want to get this thing running. So I tried several times. Couldn't get it to fire over, and I'm thinking it just is acting strange. It doesn't feel right turning over, and we will zoom in closer, and I will show you some of the things that I found also. So don't think you're going to be just sitting here looking at me. The next segment, you're going to be looking more closely at the engine. But so this was engine was in a, a trade deal that I got the much better end of the deal with a good friend of mine, Keith, who has donated several really really awesome engines to me and he got hit this was one of two engines like this that he's got and I believe that he told me that you know when he got this one that it was I don't recall exactly what he said the seller the person that sold it to him said what was the deal with it whether it had been run or not to me it looks like a brand new engine I mean it just looks like a brand new engine but I'm finding that that may not necessarily be the case or maybe it is a new engine but I suspect that somebody's actually been in this engine because I was just noticing some really odd things when I was trying to turn it over the fact that it wouldn't take a prime the fact that it wouldn't even pop over I mean so not so and I was I had forced the prime by blowing into the uh, return line here in the tank and forcing fuel into the cylinders Still wouldn't fire over, wouldn't even pop at all, not even a bump. I even shot fuel directly down into the cylinders. Nothing. Both my nice starters, freshly charged, glowing great. These are brand new plugs. These, the plugs were brand new because Keith actually bought four brand new plugs to put in there. So the plugs are not an issue. Not so much as a pop. The vent, crankcase vent, clear no issue there. I couldn't hear a leak anywhere as I rotated this over. Sounded fine to me. So, 
Now, with all of that preface said, I'm going to reframe this video and zoom in more closely and tell you, show and tell what I believe the theory is behind this engine and why I'm going to have to take it apart. Okay, so here we go. I've got this reframed and I'm going to be doing some show and tell here. I've got it zoomed out pretty far right now just because it's a beautiful engine and I wanted to show you that. So let me reframe it here and uh, we'll get going with this demonstration of what I found. You're not going to be able to see everything, but you're going to be able to see the valves, which is the most important part. <clears throat> Okay, so I began to, when it wasn't even popping over, I was like, well, and, and, and I also discovered that, guess what, you know, I'm not feeling a compression stroke on both cylinders. In fact, I was feeling something that felt like compression, but I wasn't really sure if it was because the fact that when I removed a plug from each engine I it never changed the feeling stayed the same so for a moment I'm gonna zoom out here and this is kinda like I said this is kind of a lot to take in so here I am I'm rotating this over don't look at the valves right now I'm feeling something here so let me go back I'm feeling something here I'm, my hand is here Felt a little something. Felt something. Felt something. Felt a little something. Felt something. Felt something. So there's not a whole lot of information on this on this engine. There's a Clarence Lee review, which fortunately is a pretty good review. I mean, all of his are good. But he says that this is a fires on every it, there's a, a fire for every revolution of the prop now today it feels like I'm feeling something slightly different than I felt the other day yesterday let me do this again so and when I say I'm feeling something I'm, I'm saying that I'm actually thinking I feel compression here a little bit there a little bit there a little bit there a little bit so it's it's it feels weird now I'm gonna remove a plug from each cylinder because yesterday it was kind of a late late afternoon also and maybe I was just tired like I am now but I thought that even after I removed the plugs that everything felt the same so now we've only got there's two plugs per cylinder but obviously if you take one out it should remove all compression and the ability to feel compression. So let me rotate this through one more time. Okay, now I'm not feeling anything. So I did, in what I did yesterday, I must have generated compression, <coughs> excuse me, somewhere. But I still think what I'm going to tell you as the kicker here is valid. And we'll get to that here eventually. Let me see if I can get this plug back in here. I'm putting one plug in the back, rear cylinder. Felt something there. Felt something there. Felt something there. Now I'm going to take that plug and put it over in this cylinder. And I know this may seem boring and like I'm not really going anywhere with this, but stay with me here. I am rather tired though too. Felt something there. You heard it. Felt something there. So this is interesting because it just seems like things are a little bit different. Putting both plugs back in. Felt compression. Felt something. Felt something. Okay, so anyway, I think I've done enough of that. Now I want to go on to show you a little bit more about what I discovered and what I don't believe is right. So, just pay attention to the valves here. Let me try and adjust this just a hair. 
So these are two FA 100T cylinders. This one is facing forward, this one is facing aft. The intakes, the intakes are connected Actually, I think these were, maybe they're Sato 91 cylinders, I think is what the Clarence Lee article said, because the Sato 91 one had a boss or something set up so that you could drill into this side um, of the, the side of the head so that you could have ports on both sides of the head. But anyway, so these are, these rocker arms here are the intakes and obviously the exhaust. So, Clarence Lee's article says, it fires on every revolution of the prop. Watch these intake valves. Just pay attention just to the intake valves. See how the intake valves are both operating at the same time? Same with the exhaust valves. They're both operating at exactly the same time. So to me, I started looking at that and I stared at this. And I did this for about 15 minutes last night. I'm like, inline twin with the V configuration I'm thinking well, is that right and I don't believe that that's right because Clarence Lee's article says it fires on every revolution of the prop which means one revolution this engine with the cylinder would fire the other revolution this would fire meaning and I talked to my buddy Harvey about this too and he agrees but he's also going to be very intently interested in seeing this video agrees that these should be opposite the uh, the rocker action so when this is going down on an intake like that we should not be having an intake portion going in here we shouldn't be intaking both cylinders at the same time they should be alternating so where I'm actually going with this is the engine completely doesn't fire it doesn't run at all so what I did was when I took these rocker arms off I was like well you know maybe just the valve lashes off and that was what made me take the rocker arms off to begin with so I pulled up the manual for the Sato 200 Ti and I'll put an image of exactly what it says on there for the rocker arms to check the valve lash because I'm thinking you know I'll just check the valve lash I'll see if it says anything different it doesn't say anything different it basically says you know when you are on the compression stroke and you can tell them both it says I, I'll read it from that I don't re, I'm not recalling exactly what it's saying right now but it says do this and then turn another quarter turn and both you know rocker arms should be at top dead center so basically they're just saying put them at top dead center but it didn't say alternately it didn't say do this on each cylinder it just said put it at top dead center so that's kind of kind of confusing in a way it could be and it says nothing in the manual about timing so what I am suspecting and what I'm going to investigate because nothing I do here makes this thing want to fire I mean it won't even take a prime and we are at full throttle right now uh, let me put this over here put my finger over here and I don't know if you can see that fuel line but nothing nothing comes in there at all it's not even coming close so my theory is that maybe this engine is new still or one run I don't know I haven't opened anything up inside to, to determine that but my theory is that the owner prior to Keith took one of the heads off rotated the prop perhaps and that one of these cylinders is mistimed. So I'm thinking that you treat this just like a regular boxer style engine or any twin cylinder engine and you set the timing on one cylinder at top dead center for that cylinder and then you rotate it over 180 degrees until the next top dead cylinder or until the next top dead cylinder for this cil uh, cylinder and then you place the timing gear in there. And I'm saying that because, oh, I just, I just lost what I was going to say here. <clears throat> Give me a second to recoup here. Hmm. 
You know, I lost my train of thought there. It's been a long day already. But anyway, so that's the theory. My theory is that this engine is mistimed. So the only other person that I know that's ever disassembled this, so I'm a member of the Sato Engine Owners Group or something on Facebook, and when I first got this engine, I put that, this exact query to them. Not because I thought I had an issue with this engine, just because I wanted to know if I ever disassembled it. I said, how do you re-time, how do you set the timing on this engine? And I probably had about 25 to 30 people respond, and nobody, everybody was guessing. Nobody had actually done it. And I'm like, I don't want guesses. I want to know, from, I want to hear from somebody who's actually done it, period. And then tested it to make sure it works. That's what I wanted to know. <clears throat> nobody could do that. The only other person I know that has one of these engines has completely disassembled it and reassembled it. His name is Igor, and he's on the YouTube channel Crazy Engines. He lives in the Ukraine. So I sent him an email today explaining my situation and referencing his video. And I said, so the one thing you did in this video, which was a beautiful video, was incredible. You didn't show the reassembly. And I said, so how did you retime this? So he told me what he thought about retiming it as basically what Harvey and I came up with as far as how to time it which was set this it set the uh, you know one of the cylinders it didn't matter which one set one of them at top dead center put the timing see see what the timing gears say because most twins will have either a dot on one and then a dot on the other but then a line see what the timing shafts or the timing wheels have on them time one rotate it over until you get to the next top dead cylinder, top dead center for this cylinder, and then pop that timing gear in place and see what happens. And that's basically what Igor told me. Now, as of this moment, he's reassembled his engine, which was a year ago, but he hasn't had the opportunity to run it to see if he's correct. So that's where this becomes a video series, because right now this thing is on the stand, obviously. And I'm going to have to now take it off the stand, take it upstairs, and begin the partial disassembly of this engine and try to see if there is a timing issue, see if I can remedy this, because as it stands right now, this engine will not run at all. I do not believe that it's timed right. I think you shouldn't have exhausts and intake valves on a twin cylinder engine. It just doesn't seem like they should be actuating at the same time seems like that should be opposite and my buddy Harvey also agrees so to me the theory is somebody's been inside this engine and they screwed up the timing didn't have a clue how to remedy it and maybe just maybe that's the reason why they sold it because they screwed it up and we're like oh crap now I'm just gonna dump this thing and maybe that's exactly what happened Keith bought it and then we did a trade and now it's mine and now I get the opportunity to investigate this Sato FA200TI mystery